Hi everybody, Dave Winder here on the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. And here's what's coming up on the Open Week show for the Racers. Well, Murray State enjoying that Open Week as they head to UT Martin. Coach Hatcher will talk about what the Racers have been doing during the Open Week. It's a 1 o'clock kick Saturday and it'll be on Racer TV. Plus today we'll have our coordinators updated. We visit on the offensive side of the ball with Mitch Stewart and the defensive side with Dennis Burrell. Plus some homecoming football memories as we visit some of the former racers from years gone by. Nobody wants to kick the Walter. We'll talk about that today, plus an OBC update and the voice of the racers, best calls from Neil Bradley. The Racer Report begins right now. Folks, and welcome to the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. And we are ready after the open week to play some football on Saturday. The Racers at UT Martin. It's a day game at 1 o'clock, and we hope all the Racer fans will go down. It's a short drive. The game will be, of course, on Racer Radio, but it'll also be on Racer TV and ESPN3 on Saturday. So we're looking forward to that. And, uh, coach, the Racers are coming off the open week. And it was a much needed open week, and hopefully everybody's rested and you're ready to play some football on Saturday. I think we are, Dave. Um, you know, there's many different ways to approach the bye week, and um, I've practiced the entire week. Um, I've given the guys time off during the week. Um, but, you know, with, with the way we our, our season's progressed up to this point, um, we needed some time away. So um, we met with the guys on Tuesday, gave them Monday off. Wednesday, had a good practice. Thursday, more of a walk-through weightlifting session, and then gave them the entire weekend off. And, and, and that's pretty standard. Um, and the guys have come back. They're fresh. Um, they're excited. We got a big stretch run ahead of us starting with UT Martin, um, who's a tremendous ball club. I mean, it's a team that's really had their way with Murray um, the, the years before I took over. And then, you know, we're one and two against them. We beat them the first season I was here. And then the past two seasons, um, they beat us pretty bad. And then last year at homecoming, um, they beat us by a touchdown in a very high scoring ball game. So um, this is a pivotal matchup, a key game for us to reach our goals and um, we got to be ready to play and play our best football of the season. Well we knew it would be uh, coming uh, and after you just take a look and we'll show some of uh, Walter Powell's uh, best returns, the, the guy is electric when he is in a return situation. Well he's, he's electric anytime he's got the ball in his hands. We knew it would come to it. You know really Tennessee Tech was the last team to kick to him. The last couple of weeks teams are content with uh, averaging say 32 yards a punt instead of 42. They're, they're okay with popping the kickoff and then you get good field position. But what you have to do with that is you got to do something with that good field position to make them pay for it. Well, that's, that's true. And, you know, you look back at, at the game, um, Tennessee Tech, um, they, they were trying to kick away from Walter, but um, the kicker messed up and Walter makes them pay. And then against um, Austin P, they were trying to kick away from him. Walter returns one and gets called back on a holding call. Um, so, you know, we discuss that. We, we discuss that all the time. If they're going to kick it short, um, you know, we'll, it's just like getting a 10-yard return. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then every now and then they're going to miss one and we're going to get a big return. But Walter's the type of player, especially on special teams, um, if you can give him some space, um, you just you hold your breath because he's so dynamic with the ball in his hands. Um, so we got to continue to be well in that area. Um, that's a, an advantage and edge that we have with his great return skills. And each week it's a challenge on our part to find ways to get him the ball with some space because we know he can make things happen when, when, when those scenarios arise. Okay, so the, the other part that the Racers uh, did in the last ball game was, was play probably, the, I thought, their best defensive game of the year. Now, granted, Austin P hasn't won a game, but I saw a lot of good things in that game uh, living on the other side of the line of scrimmage, first of all. And whenever you can do that, then Coach Thorell is sending that corner. He's just sending a safety, a linebacker in, in passing situations. And uh, I mean, you have to feel really encouraged about the way the defense has been playing. You know, when you 
really much uh, go back maybe the last three or four games. You could see them gaining. Yeah, we are. We're getting better. We're tackling better. We're lining up. Uh, um, a lot a lot better than we did before and, and, and that's key to being a good defense to control all the gaps and um, be gap sound and gap conscious so we've done a nice job with that um, offensively you know we've sputtered a, a great deal we've been again it goes back to the first show we did consistency is something that we've lacked um, and I think part of that has been um, as coaches we we've been very conservative offensively because we have a a, a rookie quarterback right. back there. So um, I would expect to see us turn Mikel loose. We understand we're going to have to live with some, maybe some mistakes, but um, we're going to be a little bit more wide open as we go into this final stretch. And, and I say that, that's why you go into the game. But just like the, the last game we played against Austin Peay, it became a defensive battle, it became a field position struggle. So we know we can do that, but we're going to have to take advantage of these stops the defense has been given the offense um, in order to move forward because these next four ball games we got um, are the toughest, um, is, is the toughest part of our schedule well, this well, th season. This is it, and you take a look at it. You got UT Martin on Saturday, and then you got Eastern Illinois and Tennessee State and Eastern Kentucky. If you look at the preseason poll, those are the teams right there, and uh, the Racers are going to have to go out and, and play well, but it all starts uh, with Saturday against uh, UT Martin. And uh, here on the uh, show after the open week, it's, it's our tradition, Coach. Uh, we have you on for one segment, and then we're going to visit with uh, Dennis Thorell, defensive coordinator, and Mitch Stewart, offensive coordinator. So if you don't mind, we'll say, uh, say goodbye to you right now, and we'll catch you next week, Coach. Sounds great. Okay. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank okay. you. Okay. Head Coach Chris Hatcher will come back and, and catch up on offense and defense with the Racers in just a moment. Like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. We are racers. Enough of this golf already. I want you to go. Golf no. stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. At Time Warner Cable, any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why do you got a laptop? I want the cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. And we're back here in the Racer Report. We've uh, given Coach Hatcher the rest of the week off as we do uh, kind of traditionally uh, with the open week show. And now joined by defensive coordinator Dennis Thorell. And uh, Dennis, the first time you and I had had a chance to catch up since it was 95 degrees during uh, fall camp. So I <laughs> yeah, I was covered in sweat that day. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you coming up, and we'll have Mitch Stewart on in the next segment. But, uh, Coach, uh, uh, now that you and I were eight weeks into the season, maybe just uh, take us from where the defense was when the season started and to where you are right now and how you feel about it. Well, you know, we first started out the, uh, we knew that how we were gonna be able to play against spread offenses with four wides, that kind of, uh, of offense. The thing that was unsettled was, uh, how were we going to be versus when a tight end came in the ball game or two tight ends or we got into a, 
uh, a set that had a traditional pro set with a full back and a tight end and two wide outs. That, that was, uh, we didn't know uh, how we were going to match up to that. And that's been a little bit of a struggle. Uh, it started, uh, you know, uh, mostly the Missouri State game. Uh, to, and, you know, now we felt like we've kind of uh, got that settled down and got it honed in, and uh, especially against the run. Well, uh, the, the most recent example uh, we have of Murray State, of course, is the Austin P game. But right now, uh, what I wanted to show, uh, just kind of going back, was the, the turnovers that this team has forced. Um, it seems like you've won the turnover battle almost every game. And I know that's a part of your philosophy. You, you have to take the ball away from the opponent to be successful in this game. And uh, for the most part, the racers have done that. We have, uh, you know, the secondaries uh, got a number of interceptions. Uh, you know, our goal every ball game is to try to come up with three turnovers. Mm -hmm. uh, some games, you know, a couple games we got four. Uh, a couple of games we've fallen short. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, you know, we've been pleased with it. It's something that we emphasize that you know the game has changed. Uh, used to it was about time of possession. It was about yardage given up. And and today with the spread offenses and that uh, that whole philosophy you know defensively we've had to change also and 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 that being said you know we're more concerned about how many times do we get the ball back to the offense without giving any points up uh, or touchdowns up uh, you know being great in the red zone and making them kick field goals instead of score touchdowns because you know these spread offenses are going they're going to move the football and they got you spread out uh, you know until the field condenses down you know you got you got to live with some things and so and then you know the turnover battle being the other yeah so well the racers have done uh, really really good they're on the plus side on, on the turnover battle so how do you see it going forward here? You got a really tough UT Martin team, and then you know what lays lays ahead after that. You got some tough ball. I mean, you know, up. we got hopefully get some get rested up here. We've got a uh, you know a couple of guys that are beaten, banged up, mm -hmm. and then we need to get the nicks and the bruises all healed up, and uh, and let this be our season. You know, there's old cliche. You know, it's not what you do in September and October. It's what you do in November right. that people remember. And and uh, for us, uh, you know, it's gonna it is. You know, it's a new football season for us, and we have to uh, uh, go into this thing full board, just like at the start of the season. All right, Dennis, thank you for stopping okay. by. We thank you very it. much. Always, always good yeah. to catch up with defensive coordinator Dennis Thorell. We'll take a break here on the Race Report and come back with offensive coordinator Mitch Stewart. We'll do that next. I go because my friends are here. I go because it's so close. I go for the small class sizes. I go to get a better job. I go because I can take classes when it works for me. I go because I can transfer my credits. I go for some of Kentucky's most affordable tuition. I go because it's crazy not to. For all the right reasons, the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Higher education begins here. Hey, ladies. Ah. Enjoying the film? Of course not. Because this is our movie! And Dr. Pepper 10 is our soda. It's only 10 manly calories, but with all 23 flavors of Dr. Pepper. It's what guys want, like this. Catchphrase. So you can keep the romantic comedies and lady drinks. We're good. Dr. Pepper 10, it's not for women. <laughs> 10 seconds to go. in top of the key. Six seconds to go to three. Oh! Enough of this golf already. I want you to go. Golf no. stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. At Time Warner Cable, any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why do you got a laptop? I want the yeah. cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. And we're back here on the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. And we mentioned uh, our 
Off week uh, tradition is to give Coach a little time off. We uh, visited with Coach Thorell in the last segment, and now our pleasure to have Mitch Stewart, offensive coordinator, uh, here on the race report. So, uh, Mitch, uh, great to see you again. Good to see you. Appreciate uh, you having me. Yeah, I haven't uh, had a chance to catch up with you since fall camp. Right. Um, so uh, the whole body of work, how, how do you feel about uh, the, the racer offense right now where you're sitting uh, after eight weeks? Uh, we're getting there. You know, it's a process. And, and uh, I think everybody who was, who was associated uh, with the program or knew, you know, anything about it, uh, I think they kind of knew it was going to be a, uh, a new year offensively uh, when you lose a guy like, you know, the quarterback last year and, and uh, also some skilled kids that we lost, you know, and, and there's been a lot of plugging in some places, um, so on and so forth. So I kind of knew going in into the year that it was going to be one of those where, uh, you know, it may take the first two or three weeks to figure out who you are. Um, and you know, and I think in some ways we've done that, but at the same time, we're still building, we're still growing. I will say that's probably the thing that I like the most um, is we are progressing, even though it doesn't show all the time uh, during the game and on the scoreboard. We're, we're doing some good things. The kids are doing some good things. The, the trigger guy back there, you know, Mikhail, he's growing every week. Um, I'm learning to grow with him. You know, I, I was spoiled uh, with, with, with coaching the same guy for two years as a coordinator and then uh -huh. one year as the receivers coach, you, you kind of get in a groove with that guy. Uh, and now I'm having to do it all back over again, but I'm, I'm starting to learn him. He's starting to learn me. Um, and we're getting a little bit more comfortable with one another. And, and that's probably the biggest thing right now. Well, uh, <clears throat> let, let's talk about Mikhail Miller. Uh, he can do so much. And you could see the game is starting to slow down for him, can't you? It, it is. Uh, you know, you, you're starting to see when you watch him on Sunday, you're starting to see him go through his progressions a little bit more. Um, and, and that's probably been the biggest thing with him. Uh, you know, I don't think he was a guy that was used to going through four and five progressions like we're going to put on the field, you know, uh, with our passing concepts. So he's starting to get a little bit more comfortable with that. And then the biggest thing that he adds is, is the 11th man. You know, it's yeah. so important for defenses to have to defend the 11th guy offensively. Um, and, and he gives you the ability to do that. Yeah, well, he's uh, certainly, uh, <laughs> certainly played good Saturday. Uh, he was 19 out of 22. And, uh, one of those was it was an interception, but it was an incredible play uh, by number 43 of Austin P. But uh, you know you could see he's starting to have a really good idea where the ball needs to go, or does he need to take off with it? Well, yeah, he, and, and he's getting better at that. You know, and I will say the the one interception, uh, I will go on record and tell tell everybody <laughs> that was my fault. I actually <laughs> told him to throw that. Uh -huh. um, we had we had run a previous play that was kind of similar to that, and, and the corner busted wide open. And I said, look, man, I don't care what you do. The next time I call that, throw the corner. It's going to be there. And, of course, when he came up to the sideline, <laughs> it kind of did this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, That's it, one it, of those inside stories we don't uh, always hear about. Right, right. And he's kind of looking at me, and I said, ah, well, at least you were the one on the field, so everybody blame you for it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, he, he did play very well. We didn't ask him to do a whole bunch. We just kind of asked him to manage it a little bit. Um, and I thought he did a pretty good job of doing that. Okay, well, we've we got about a minute here, Coach. Um, <laughs> The running game has been a big uh, staple of this offense. Uh, Dwayne set out last the last game. Jamal yep. Brady uh, or Jamal Barry mm -hmm. looks like he's really ready to roll now. He too. he did an awesome job for us. The the, the offensive line did a tremendous job. Uh, Barry did a tremendous job. You know we had Marcus Holiday. He took a few snaps and ran very Jordan hard. Morrow. Uh, Jordan Morrow took a few mm -hmm. snaps. You know we're always going to go into a game having three running backs just in case. And Morrow did an excellent job during the week preparing himself and giving us an opportunity. Uh, to, to you know to, to allow him to do that, but I uh, can't say enough about Jamal Bear in that offensive line, and, and uh, you know, and it was evident at the end of the game. We just we said, look here, we're going to let them take it over, and and uh, and they I thought they did a good job with that. All right, Mitch. Well, the Racers are right where they want to be. They've got a chance. Uh, the the teams that they have to catch are on the schedule still yet. So good luck this week against I UT appreciate Martin. Appreciate it. Thank you very okay. much. Assistant coach and offensive coordinator Mitch Stewart will take a break and come back with uh, some homecoming memories of some of our former lettermen. We'll do that next on the Race Report. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, 
safe service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. It's Enough of this golf already. How much of the golf? Golf's no. stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. At Time Warner Cable, any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why have you got a laptop? I want the yeah. cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience, guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. I go because my friends are here. I go because it's so close. I go for the small class sizes. I go to get a better job. I go because I can take classes when it works for me. I go because I can transfer my credits. I go for some of Kentucky's most affordable tuition. I go because it's crazy not to. For all the right reasons. The Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Higher education begins here. work on that tan, bro. Hi, folks, and welcome back to the Racer Report. Thanks to head coach Chris Hatcher and also our coordinators, Mitch Stewart and Dennis Thorell, for being on the show today. Well, we've got a little bit more left for you. Of course, uh, two weekends ago, it was a homecoming weekend at Murray State, and we had a chance to go to the M Club breakfast, and we caught up with some of our former Racer football players, in particular, one former coach who coached in the late 1950s. He was the head coach, Jim Cullivan, who now lives in Paris, Tennessee. Let's give it a listen. And uh, we, went, we went pretty well. We had, uh, had the bowl team, as they still refer to the 48 group. So all my memories there are pleasant. Mainly the, well, the reason I'm here uh, this morning, the association made with the players and uh, teammates and guys that played for you. And there was one group that uh, would fit both categories. Uh, my senior year, the freshmen, my senior year, were seniors of when I was back coaching. Man, the football we played back then was completely different than what I see now. Now it's like a, a track race, you know. <laughs> back then it was smash mouth football, you know. Frank Rick Beamer bought a special brand of football back in our days with the Wild Talk Six. We had some wonderful players from all over the country, you know, unlike what I've seen over some of the years here, it's more localized, but now they're getting back to a rider base, they get athletes from all over the country, so it was, it, it was some great football back then. It means a lot. I think the the opportunity that I had here at Murray State uh, is, is tremendous. It's definitely a blessing. It provided me an opportunity to go not only to Murray, but across the country as well as outside this country to be exposed playing brand of football that we do. Kramer, I always say something about him. I mean, he was one of the guys. He's my neighbor. Awesome guy. Totally awesome guy. I love Dr. Kramer. Even from a football stance, loved it. From a uh, opportunity for his occupational safety and health, loved it. Phone call away. And I, and I think uh, the opportunity to, to shake people's hand and to just reminisce and as well as to have and develop those friendships, for life journeys, not only from football, but life expectations is great. So I, I love Murray, and I want to continue to come back, at least continue to show my face and, and do what I can to help the, help the school. You know, and uh, having played here, when I come up 641 from Henderson, and I see that stadium, I feel like I'm at home, man. So it's always good to come back. This is my first time at the M Club breakfast, and I'm trying to encourage some of the guys from my area to get here. But uh, love coming back to Murray. It's like coming home. So, uh, Enough of this golf already. How much of the golf? Golf's no. stupid. You're stupid. Boys, settle down. At Time Warner Cable, 
Any of these devices can be your TV at the click of a button. No one offers more sports on more devices than Time Warner Cable. Why have you got a laptop? I want the yeah. cell phone. Give me that laptop. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC and ask how you can save up to $600. Switch to a better entertainment experience guaranteed. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. folks and welcome back to the wrap-up segment of the racer report for this week we'd like to thank uh, head coach Chris Hatcher he was on in the first segment and our coordinators were on in the second and third segment uh, we usually try to do it this way uh, during the uh, week coming off an open week so the racers were off last week enjoying that homecoming victory against Austin P but now they're they're going to be entering the toughest part of their season the last four games against the top four teams in the preseason poll in the OVC starting with Saturday it's a one o'clock kick at Hardy Graham Stadium at UT Martin. We'll be on Racer TV uh, at 12.30 on all the cable systems around Callaway County. And then we'll also be on ESPN3 with that game. And you can see it on the OVC Digital Network. And of course, Racer Radio will be on there too. So we're looking forward to that one o'clock kick at UT Martin on Saturday. And then after that, it's Eastern Illinois at home. Um, on the road at, to Tennessee State and then home against Eastern Kentucky to finish the season. Hopefully the racers are going to hit their stride and play their best football of the season. So that'll do it for this week on the Racer Report. As we leave you today, here are some of the best calls from the first half of the season. For the voice of the racers, Neil Bradley, we'll see you next week. Miller and shotgun, Brady to his right. They throw, it's going to be a little razzle-dazzle, pass back to Miller, a pop-up, catches it at the 10, spins away from his man, and he takes it into the end zone! Unbelievable, Mizzou Bennett, hook, line, and sinker on the throwback from Harness to Miller. Second down and four. Miller throws right side to Powell. Powell, short side of the field, has some room! He's across the 20, 15, 10! He's gone for the touchdown with 47 seconds to go! Miller with it, in the pocket, good protection, throws down the middle, caught by Harness, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, goodbye, Jeremy Harness with a touchdown, and the racers take the lead. Little Miller has the ball, looks, throws the deep ball, he's got Powell in stride at the 20, 15, 10, he shoots him in, and he's going to score, how did he do that, two defenders about to bring him down, he shook both of them off and goes into the end zone for the touchdown. But now fourth and goal, the four racers going for it. They hand it. They fake the reverse. They go right side. They got a man open. Touchdown! Fake the reverse. They throw into the end zone. It's a touchdown to Walter Powell. And the racers take the lead. 32 to 31. Hickory, dickory, doc. Let's run this off the clock. Trips left. They got to get a first down or a touchdown right here. Miller fakes left. Throws into the end zone. Caught by Powell in the right corner of the end zone. Put six on the board. And the racers take the lead with 23.8 seconds to go. It's 40 to 38. Five, 
Handoff goes to Barry. He's across the 20, 15, makes a cut. He's at the 10, 5. Goodbye. Jamal Barry with a touchdown to the Racers on the board with 3.09 to go. It's 30. He was right. They send a man in motion. Now back this way. It's a handoff to Brady. Up the middle for the touchdown. They fooled everybody. Nikhail Miller. Man in motion is Harness. Miller rolls right, looks, throws. Caught by Harness. He scores. The Racers score. The two-point conversion is good.